believe it. We are now into the second week of Advent. Time is flying by. Today we are going to look at a topic that has, you know, caused so much confusion and so much uncertainty that some have just said, I don't even know what to believe, so I'll just maybe make something up that I feel comfortable with, or maybe you've just kind of let it go because it's too confusing. We are talking today about the second coming of Christ. We celebrate in Advent, the uh, Advent means arrival. We celebrate the arrival of Christ, the first coming when he was born as a baby in a manger. But don't forget that in this season, we celebrate that he taught that he's coming again. So if you have questions about that, if you wonder, you know, what does the Bible teach? What should I believe? Stay tuned. In these next few minutes, we're going to unpack a little bit about the end of the world as we know it. And maybe you're saying, I feel fine. Still challenge you to stay tuned in. Welcome. I'm Pastor Jody. I'm the pastor here of Oxnaz Line. We do church online. Welcome you here today. And when you're here, you're family. It's nice to know that, that uh, we have each other and we're not alone in this journey of faith. So if you have questions at any time, if you want to learn more, if you want to engage, if you need prayer, reach out anytime. And if you want to say hi, you're here, give a thumbs up. Let me know you're out there. I love to see uh, the names and, the, and get to know some of the people who are part of our online digital family. So welcome. Let's dive in. It's interesting. Jesus said some, some really, really cool things to, to his people that are recorded in scripture when he was alive. He had this one conversation where he told his followers, he said, you've trusted God, now I need you to trust me. Then he told them something that they couldn't even comprehend at the time. He said, I am going but I am going to prepare a place so that when the time is right, I will come again and I will get you and you will be with me where I am forever. And they couldn't really understand what that meant because Jesus was still alive. He, he hadn't even yet went to the cross and been died and resurrected and went on the clouds. But Jesus said this to them that he was going to prepare a place where they would be with him forever and one day he would come back. You know, while there are so many of, uh, of these parts of scripture that we can't understand clearly taught in many, many sections of scripture is that Jesus declared that he was coming again. In fact, when he went up in the clouds after he had been resurrected, the angels that were gathered said the same way that he ascended, he will come again on the clouds. Now, I remember when I was a little girl, my grandfather loved to study the end times. He would be so proud today to know that I'm sharing some of the things that he taught me. But he would say, Jode, you know, it says in Thessalonians that the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the trump of God sounding, the dead in Christ will rise first, and then we who are alive and remain, we will be caught up in the air to meet them in the sky, and so we will ever be with the Lord. And I was like, wow, Grandpa, he taught me all about how one day Jesus said that the trumpet will sound, that time will be fulfilled in history, that he is ready to come again, and that those who believed in him, people like my grandfather who, who lived for Jesus, that they are going to go first. They're going to rise again to meet the Lord in the sky. You know, when, when God's timetable is fulfilled, crazy, miraculous things happen that we can't even get our mind around. Do you remember the story that when, when Jesus was resurrected, that the tombs of the saints were opened and they were, they were ro risen from the dead and they were walking around the city and many people saw many of them alive again. Well, when the power of God becomes alive on this earth, when Jesus comes again, the dead are going to be raised to life. And we that are alive, if we're still living at that time when he comes in the sky, when the trumpet sounds, we will be lifted up and the great climax of the love story of all time, God's love for humanity will be fulfilled when the bridegroom comes for his bride, his people, those who believe in him. And we will be swept up to have the marriage feast. It's called the, the, the great banquet in heaven. There are so many things to be excited and anticipate. And in fact, so many of the Bible writers talked about the, the fact that when we see Jesus, 
that, that we will receive a crown of righteousness. Timothy talked about that and he wrote about that. And he said, I look forward to that day when the just judge of all, when the righteous judge will place on my head a crown of righteousness. But he said, not just for me, it's not just me that's gonna make it, it's for all those who eagerly anticipate his coming. So many writers talked about the fact we should eagerly anticipate the second coming of Christ. And I think, wow, as I've heard it from my grandpa, as I've learned about it in scripture, as I read this week that so many times in scripture, he says he's coming back for those who eagerly await his arrival. I, I needed to pause for a minute and I, I want you to pause. What does it mean for us to be eagerly awaiting it? Are you eager for the second coming of Christ? Have you ever thought about that? Because many, many times it says he's coming for those who are eagerly awaiting. And, and I, I just want to be truthful with you. As I pause to chew on that this week, I struggle because I am, I, I am, I see Timothy uh, almost in, in my mind as he wrote those words in scripture and, and I hear my grandpa and I, I get excited for when that's going to happen and I will see my Lord face to face. But I recognize that that is going to be a time of judgment. And so it's hard. It's hard for me to at one time, you know, be anticipating. And, and maybe you know how I'm feeling if you're a believer. Yes, we have this, this part of our hearts that eagerly awaits that day when we'll see him. But we know people who don't believe. And we've read the words and heard how Jesus taught about that time. Let's look at that because it's important. If you're not sure where you land on this, it's important that I tell you what Jesus said. Do you know that he painted a picture in a conversation that he had with his disciples of what that was going to be like? And he said this to them. He said, the son of man will come in all his glory. Picture at the skies open and the son of man, Jesus Christ, coming in glory. It said all the angels will be with him and he will take his place on the throne and he will gather all the nations around him. And then he said, just like a shepherd would separate his sheep from his goats, so the son of man will do the same and he will separate people into two camps to the one on the right hand he will he will look at those ones and say blessed are you receive the inheritance the kingdom of god that was prepared for you since the beginning of the world eternal life if we could comprehend what he's saying, he's telling us that his kingdom is about to be established and those on the right, those who have believed in him, those that are his own, they're about to receive the eternal life, the world creation before death, before sickness, before brokenness, before disease and pandemic, before the world was broken apart by sin. Before that, it, it was perfect. That creation is going to be restored when the new heaven and the new earth that we read about in scripture are established. So he's going to say to those on the right, inherit this kingdom prepared since the beginning of the world, but to those on his left, he's going to say, I never knew you. You're now getting what you have desired, a life separate from me. Go into this eternal space where it's punishment. It's described as fire where you will get what you desired and that will be a separation from God, a life without God. This is, this is hard. And I know it, it begins to raise all these questions. Well, I'm not that bad of a person. I've never murdered anyone. And we begin to wrestle with who is God that he would send me to hell? And we, we have those questions and I've heard them and maybe you've asked them. Maybe you've wrestled with them. And I, I want you to understand that God, his judgment is an expression of his love. And you might say, okay, you've gone too far. Bear with me here for a second. There is no love without justice. Now that is not a Christian slogan. It's not just a nice thing for a pastor to say. You go in Google 
and you Google love without justice, you will see that every writer from every, um, every religion, every philosophy, every type of thinking will recognize that love requires justice. And, and I read these words in psychology today. Let me read them to you because they just blew my mind. Someone wrote in a psychology paper, love honors the sovereignty of each soul. Think about that. Love honors the sovereignty of each soul. God has made a way when he sent the precious baby, Jesus, to be born on this earth, to live, to die, to pay for our sins, so that we people that are sinful, we, we do wrong. God is holy. It separates us. But he didn't want it to be that way, so he sent his only son because of love, so that through him, through what he did, we could be made right with God. He gave us the answer. He gave us the gift. That's what we celebrate on Christmas. That is the story of Christmas that Jesus came to earth to be our savior. But guys, it says in Galatians, don't be deceived. It says, let me read it to you. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. What does that mean? It means, and it unpacks that whoever sows to please their flesh, from their flesh will reap destruction. But whoever sows to please the spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. What the Bible is teaching is that you get a choice. You choose what and who you want relationship with this in this world, and God's going to honor that choice. When the just judge sits and passes judgment, we are only right with God, at peace with Him, and given that crown of righteousness, right standing for eternity, if we have believed on Jesus Christ to be our Savior and forgive our sins, wash us clean. That's what the Bible teaches us. And we, we get to choose in this earth because He loves us. He didn't make us choose Him. If you choose to live for yourself and you are the Lord of your own life and you, you, you fulfill every desire of your heart and your mind and you choose to, to focus on things in this world that you feel are valuable, and one of them is not to serve and live for God, he will honor that choice when he judges all people, when he gathers them in, before his throne. So you might say, well, what do I do? What do I expect? How is this going to happen? When is it going to happen? I, I have so many questions. Well, let's first look at when. You know, it, it just breaks my heart that so many people have, have said, this is the date and time when the Lord's going to return at Y2K. I remember the craziness. The world is going to end. The world is going to end. It's like crying wolf. So many of you out there, there's been so many followers of Jesus that have, that have cried wolf so many times. You've just forgot about it. You just don't even want to listen. The Bible teaches so clearly it will come like a thief in the night. You won't expect it. It's going to come sudden and quickly when he chooses. He even says that the two people will be working in the field and one will be taken and one will be left. Two will be lying in bed, one taken, one left. It's going to happen suddenly. We're not going to know when, but it's going to take place in an instant. And how? The Bible says it's going to be like lightning, like lightning flashes across the sky that's seen from the east to the west. It's going to be sudden and visible, and everyone's going to see it. It's not going to come when we know. It's not going to be when someone cries, this is the day and the time. But what do you do then? You know he's coming again. You know that Jesus is the way to be okay, to be the one on the right that's chosen to go to eternal life if we've chosen relationship with him. So what do we do? Just like uh, Peter taught us, 2 Peter chapter 3, he says, it's going to come like a thief, so be ready. Just be holy. You ought to be living godly lives as you an anticipate and eagerly look forward to his return. Friends, if you have made peace with God, you are ready for when the day comes that the trumpet sounds and the lightning flashes across the sky and Jesus Christ comes with all his angels in the cloud of glory. When that time comes, 
if you have given your life to Jesus, if you have believed onto salvation, you have asked him to forgive your sins, you are ready. When he says the words, behold, I'm coming soon, you can eagerly anticipate that day. But if you have chosen today to say, I just want to do my own thing. I want to live my own life. Uh, I just want, I don't know what it says in the Bible. I don't know if I even believe it's true. Please hear me. Hear me. God is the just judge. And one day you will stand before him. And I hope that when that day comes, your heart is right with God. Can I pray for you today? Heavenly Father, I thank you that you give us your word. And, and it's hard to understand. And thinking about the end of the world and when you're going to come again, it's a bit scary. It's heavy on our hearts to think that some have chosen not to follow you and that for eternity they're going to get their choice granted. Father, I pray that you would speak and call every listener that every single ear that listens in this moment would be awakened to know that you are real and that you love them and that you have paid the price that they can be confident when they stand before God that they will receive the crown. They will be a righteous one at peace with God made right through Jesus Christ, the greatest gift of all. Father, pour out your spirit, meet them where they are, help them to find salvation in Jesus' name. Amen. As we close today, I just want to tell you that this, I know, is a hard topic. I know it's hard to really feel confident about the world ending and, and, and the call for the believer to eagerly anticipate that day. But this is a season where we do prepare our hearts for the coming of Christ at Christmas and for the fact that and the truth that he's going to come in the clouds of glory. I heard from a friend this week. He told me about a man who was condemned to the gallows years back. He was facing the death penalty and he was on that march to the gallows. A priest was behind him reading the word of God. And he looked at the priest and he said, if I believed half of what you said is true, I would crawl across England on broken glass so that people would know the truth. My heart is that we would celebrate the coming of the Lord and that we would be together, whether I know you out there on the other side of that camera or whether we've never met. You have been called by God to share with me in an eternity. He's made it possible. I hope that you will choose today and I hope that we will spend eternity together with our Savior where he honors the choice that we've made in this world follow him. God bless you this Christmas season.